Hello, my name is Ross and today we are going to be solving the cast padlock puzzle. Now this is the first puzzle of this kind that I have ever done. Now the aim is to disassemble the lock and then put it back together. Probably not going to time it because it might take a couple of days, we don't know. The, the aim is to not use YouTube, not use any help whatsoever other than just figuring out this puzzle itself. In terms of difficulty, I think this is level 5 or 6. I'm not sure whether that last star actually counts as a star or whether that's saying that's the end of it, it's actually a level 5. I'm not sure about that. Maybe I'll Google it and put it in the uh, description or the title or something. Uh, so, let's crack this baby open and see what we've got to deal with. Don't need the instructions. First challenge, get past the cellar tip to actually let us in. All right, okay. Smaller than expected, but let's see what we can do. Okay, so first look. Yeah, smaller than expected and we are made up of four parts. So there's these two bits that move around the outside and then these two bits that are on the, uh, they're on the outside, sorry. These are on the inside moving around the whole thing. So, where are we looking to start with? Now, movement wise, Both of these things twist all the way around and we've got a, okay, a little bit of movement up and down. So I'm thinking, do we get more movement if the uh, spinny things on the inside are in a certain position? I guess we're going to try some trial and error first. The one thing you can, there's a lot of space when these are in certain positions, right there. I'm not sure if you can see in there, but there's a big gap in there. Why does it actually stays together at all? Okay, let's, so let's be a little bit more uh, logical about it now. And let's try and have these things in a specific position and then try different positions from there. Essentially trial and error, I guess. In terms of up and down movement, you've got these bits, so this little ridge on here, they essentially stop the whole thing from, well, stop the middle bits from going up and down. So now I'm thinking, is there a position where you get enough up and down movement here where you can then slide it down? So what you can also see, I'm not sure if you can just see in there, there's also ridges there just inside there that are stopping this from then moving down. So there's obviously going to be then a position where everything then lines up perfectly. So you've got enough space in here for this to slide that way, but also these are lined up correctly on the inside so that it's not being blocked by this thing on the other side. So it's almost like both things have got to be up in the air in that position for you to get any movement up and down with the two middle bits. If you are a veteran of watching these, or doing these, oh, 
Yes, so I was in exactly, I must have been, yeah, trial and error we get into this position now. So, is it, is it now? Okay, so now these can twist around. No, can't twist all the way around. But we've got some movement. Now I'm wary not to let us get back to the original position because how we got to this position, I wouldn't call a case of I worked it out specifically. But we've made progress. So what other movements do we have now? So now the middle bits don't really move. They're sort of locked in place. And it's these bits on the outside that now I've got much more movement in them. Can we almost... Oh, I don't want to go back together. Now, can we somehow... Swap ends, maybe? This one go to this side and have this one go to this side. Um, then, hmm, word that we're going to end up back in the position that we were originally. Oh no, we're back to where we started. Okay, so I've managed to get it back to this position where we were before. We are not quite sort of a trial and error method to get to it. But now, don't waste it. And again, the only things that seem to move are the two outside pieces. The I'm gonna call them black pieces and then the middle bits can be called the silver pieces. So the black bits are again the only things that seem to have any movement. So again, uh, this one isn't quite as obvious as to what is stopping what from moving now. And again, we've got sort of up and down movement in certain positions and not in others so again i'm guessing it's going to be a case of well it's quite obviously going to be a case of finding the bit where something moves or the only position where everything is not being blocked by something which is easier said than done Now, given that this gap is here, and that this, oh, where is it? That this gap is here. Now I'm guessing we've got to get those lined up somehow. But being in this position, and then essentially, so you get those two, the two things lined up, and then these must slide out of that gap. But 
is it even possible to get those things lined up? Given that one's here, one's here, you twist it round, and then this is gonna end up here, but this is gonna end up over here. So how does that solve the problem? Okay, so I've noticed something, I'm not exactly sure of the differences, but if you can see, we can, it sort of moves together when it's in this position. Uh, of course, it's not doing it now. Hang on. So it can move together there, when this one on the right is up, Come on. And this one on the left is down. So it can move together like that. And it can also move together when it's the other way around. What that means, I do not know yet, but I feel like that is sort of the next, or one of those, whichever way is the right progression. So we're gonna, we're gonna try the, this way around and see if we can now get any progress whatsoever from doing it this way. Ooh, we've got movement. We have got movement in a different direction. Previously when we've got movement, this, these two, the white, uh, the silver bits, they've been opposite each other. Whereas now we've got movement in the two black bits and these two aren't in alignment. So, I think we're getting close. Okay, so what I have finally noticed is that when we come to this position, which we've been here a couple of times, there's two ways of then closing it. So if we close it this way, we get this gap in here on the one closest to the padlock sign. Whereas if we close it, the other way, that gap has now disappeared and is on the opposite side. So, what I am thinking is, it's somehow a sequence of this move getting to... Can we do it? Get into here, then swap in and coming back and then going with the other move that we found. Yes! Does that just slide out of there? It does! 
Oh, oh my god. <sighs> that is so satisfying. We did it. We opened our first puzzle. Now, it took a lot longer than I expected. I think it took about an hour and a half in total. And that's over three separate sittings uh, <laughs> with over three days. So yeah, it, it took a while. But the, the more frustrated I think you get with the puzzle, the more satisfying it is when you actually solve it. And what's even more satisfying is, I've had a quick go at putting it back together. What's more satisfying is, or most satisfying, is that I actually understand how it opened, which is good. Uh, so I had a quick go at putting it back together, but I'll do that properly. I think that's just going to be a case of, uh, of time and going through the process, because uh, it's not quite in its original position at the minute. Uh, but I will do that, and yeah, love this. We will do more. I need to buy some more puzzles. I need to wash this t-shirt. I've been wearing it for three straight days now. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Uh, if you did, stick around and you will see some more.